Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to today's High Vision Technology Update webinar. Um, we're here to talk to you about why uh, great broadcasts start high, with High Vision, and we're very excited to have everybody here. Uh, just a few notes before we begin uh, on the logistics. Uh, we will be taking questions, and we have some people sitting in the background who are there to answer your questions, so please use the Q&A tool at the bottom of the screen uh, in order to submit your questions. Uh, also, uh, you will notice uh, from time to time that there's a little chat link icon. Uh, we are putting links to related uh, and supplementary content in the chat, so please uh, pay attention to that. There may be interesting links available. And we will be using the live polling tool for a little quiz later on uh, where you'll have a chance to win some prizes. We'll talk about that in a bit more. So today's speaker is, of course, is myself, Marcus Scholler. I'm the VP of Marketing at High Vision, and I'm here with Mark Horchler, the Director of Product Marketing, and Gisela Colette, VP of Product Management at High Vision. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, let's get into the agenda. What we wanted to do uh, in today's webinar, and we wanted to really make sure everybody had a chance to find out uh, what we were up to at the NAB show in Las Vegas earlier this year, back in April, actually. Um, so we'll spend some time talking about that. Uh, and then we'll give you a little bit of, of updates about some interesting information related to the SRT Alliance, as well as the recently released High Vision Broadcast Transformation Report. Uh, and then in, uh, we'll go into uh, some detail on the products, uh, notably the Makito X4, uh, the High Vision transmitter products, including the Pro and Stream Hub. And last but not least, We'll give you some information about High Vision Command 360, our video wall technology for operation and command centers. Also, fun, we like to try to do something fun in our webinars. We will be having a little web webinar trivia challenge with a few questions uh, where everybody will have a chance to submit their answers to hope maybe win one of these very cool High Vision um, baseball caps. So in order to win, you've got to answer the questions correctly, and all of the correct answers will go into a pot. Uh, we will select three names at random uh, who will win the hats, and we'll send them to you afterwards. So we'll get in touch with the winners. So moving right along, uh, let's get into our story at NAB. So uh, NAB this year was a big show for us. Of course, it was a very exciting to be in Las Vegas. Uh, we were in the West Hall. Uh, this is our booth. Actually, this is the back of our booth where we were demonstrating our broadcast products. Uh, you could see a lot of uh, a lot of people there, including uh, if you can spot our other uh, speakers today, they're hidden in that photo. Um, and what we were focusing on at the show this year was the story of our theme was great broadcast start with high vision. And we were showcasing our end-to-end uh, -end broadcast contribution product ecosystem um, for getting your content at the, the events, live content from source all the way to production. Um, and we were demonstrating uh, a full range of, of products from High Vision Pro Transmitter, the Nikito X4 Encoder, the Air Transmitter, Mojo Pro, Mobile App, Stream Hub Receiver, SRT Gateway, uh, IP Gateway, and last but not least, the Nikito X4 Decoder. So we were showing these workflows. Um, and really, we were our themes were organized in, in two main areas, which was the complete uh, entire scope range of High Vision uh, live video contribution solutions uh, including our encoders and our transmitters. So the Pro uh, for 4K low, uh, low latency video transmission, the Makito X4, of course, uh, for ultra low latency, um, live AGVC H.264 video, the Makito Air, the HD low latency transmitter, the Mojo Pro camera app. And then the second uh, side of our story was really how our products were used to fuel uh, cloud and remote production workflows. So the X4 decoder, Stream Hub, and SRT gateway factored into those demonstrations. Um, so, of course, if you are uh, were not able to attend or interested, please get in touch, and we'd be happy to tell you more about any of these things. Um, that's a quick update on what we were showing um, at NAB. We were also talking um, to the journalists, uh, the trade publications, about the recently released broadcast transformation report. Uh, if you haven't seen this already, a lot of people have downloaded it, but if you haven't seen it already, you should know that it's our fourth annual report. This year, we were very excited to have over 720 respondents. That's a large data set of information about how people have been, uh, their, their broadcast workflows have been transforming. Uh, it was released in April. We'll go over a couple of highlights here. 
Uh, there is a lot of information, so we really do encourage you um, to download the report if you haven't. You can use the QR code here to get to the page. Uh, also, the chat in the uh, the links in the chat. Um, I'll talk about a couple of points. Um, I think the most, you know, the one that jumped out for us that was really uh, exciting and very notable was the fact that the SRT protocol uh, is now uh, among the respondents, the most widely used IP live video transport protocol. 68% uh, of people were using it. Uh, this was uh, the first year in which it had surpassed RTMP. Um, unsurprisingly, considering that uh, in terms of the uh, networks that people were using for live video uh, transport internet, ranked uh, as the number one choice. So those two together were very important uh, findings for us. And then there was another interesting finding that I wanted to call out today. You can see them all here, but I really like to talk about the cloud-based workflows one. Um, now the number 84% of people were using cloud-based technology in their workflows is a very interesting finding. That's obviously a large number. However, what was also interesting to note when you looked at the numbers more closely was that 60% of people were relying on the cloud for less than one quarter of their workflow. So there is certainly a lot of room to grow. And I think what it really says is that the, the, the hybrid nature of cloud and on-prem workflows are critical in broadcast workflows. And even though we're seeing transformations taking place, uh, this the, the, the move to cloud is one that we think is, is happening slowly uh, and is happening uh, in a measured way but the need for on-prem solutions continues to be very important. That's what we found in the report. And you can see there was more information about 5G adoption, IP infrastructure, uh, transformation, and even sustainability. So please go ahead and download that report. Um, back in, just before NAB, uh, we were very excited to be able to welcome YouTube to the SRT Alliance. Uh, so this was a big development for us. And we followed it up, the announcement of them joining with a special event. It was called the SRT Interop. PlugFest webinar, which took place, well, it was the PlugFest and it was kicked off with a webinar that took place at the beginning of May. Um, the goal of this was to uh, in encourage people to join the PlugFest to test the interoperability of their encoders, their SRT capable streaming devices to send their content into YouTube. So YouTube were interested in testing SRT ingest into YouTube. Um, as part of the Interop PlugFest, it was very, very well. Um, attended and the uh, the engagement was very high. We had over uh, 30 vendors who were participating. There were uh, 55 device and software solutions that were tested, over 2000 actual device to device tests, 80 engineers around the world. And what was really exciting was we uh, were able to do a little, uh, I guess we would call it a, a, a fun test to see if we could send SRT from device to device device around the world. And what we were able to do was actually do this twice using nine sol solutions from nine different vendors with 18 hops, uh, and it was all error-free. So it was an amazing test to, that really showcased how well SRT was uh, providing solutions to stream um, between vendors so that the interoperability was, was critical here. And ultimately, the, uh, the result was a very cool SRT around the world twice. A result. So you can find out more about all of this in our blog post, which is uh, in the chat link. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mark uh, Horschler to now take us through what's uh, new with the Makito X encoders. Thanks, Marcus. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things happening with our Makito X encoders. Um, so we have some new software uh, releases, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, the big news was we also introduced two brand new Makitos starting with the Makito FX. Um, you'll just you'll see here. So it's it's a uh, fanless, very compact, very good looking encoder. But apart from that, uh, what can you tell us about some of the features you've learned? So, so the, uh, the FX is actually a derivative of the X4 uh, award-winning platform. So uh, it can actually do 4K UHD uh, up to, so obviously it supports uh, standard def, uh, high def, full HD, and all the way up to 4K UHD. Uh, P60, um, so it can do both uh, HEVC and 264 at the same time. So it's got multiple encoding cores. Um, it's got the built-in dual NIC, uh, either for redundancy or for partitioning your services. Let's say uh, one interface for streaming, the other one for management. Uh, because of the heritage of the X4 platform, so it's got the same uh, low lat latency, uh, you know, down to 120 millisecond end to end. Um, also, 4 to 10 bit, it's got HDR capabilities, it's got a pretty wide range of uh, streaming protocols. 
Um, and actually the first time within this uh, product family is like we introduce also the support of HDMI. So not only it's got the 12 gig SDI uh, interface for uh, UHD, but it can also do uh, 4K UHD over HDMI that opens up a whole new world in terms of uh, devices used as a source. So uh, at NAB, we also introduced another new Makito, if you can talk about. Yeah, but perhaps before the the uh, the other Makito, uh, uh, before we like we jump into this, the, the in addition to the traditional broadcast uh, use case, the effects uh, thanks to its HDMI input can also be used in a wide range of uh, AV over IP world. Okay, so these are just kind of like three uh, simple examples where we've got uh, you know flight simulators. Um, simulation labs uh, where you take actually the output for workstation um, and that provides a much better picture quality and frame rate uh, than let's say desktop sharing type of uh, experience so you can stream that to uh, remote viewing rooms because the streams are compatible it's obviously 264 tvc with srt or you know a regular transport stream um, it's also widely compatible with uh, you know a range of uh, third-party products I uh, can also, uh, this is something that, uh, you know, there's been a pretty uh, significant demand is actually take the output of control room, like a video wall type of experience and stream that to remote participant uh, on their phone, uh, on their desktop, so they can actually relatively passively participate into the experience and see exactly what people within their theater are experiencing as well. So, so that's uh, all this done in a very secure way. Uh, so that uh, that new product addition to the family opens up uh, a wide range of new applications. And are there some broadcast uh, applications for the FX as well? Yeah, well, because of the low latency uh, and the picture quality, HDR, uh, you know, UHD and all that, like the, you know, classic uh, video broadcast contribution uh, for production. So that's uh, well suited, obviously, because it's a fanless unit and it's extremely lightweight. Uh, you can actually take it and put it into like RoadKit. Um, it becomes a, a portable unit that uh, you can deploy based on different events that uh, you know you're covering. Okay, so again, uh, we were mentioning there's another uh, new Makito as well, the Makito X4 single channel encoder, which we showed at uh, at NEB. And uh, so Gisela, I understand, has the same exact features as the Makito X4 Quad HD version. Yeah, so this one is a uh, same form factor as the X4 and as the, you know, the Makito family generation. Um, it's also a derivative of the of the X4. So it's a single channel. It's got a full size BNC, can do uh, same resolution up to uh, 12, you know, 12 gig or 4K UHD. Uh, it's got uh, also the 2110 interface. Um, and everything else is derived from the from the X4. So you can, you know, whatever you you can expect or you know from the X4 platform, you actually have it within the the single channel. So it's really for deployments where perhaps you don't necessarily need, you know, that same level of uh, of, of density. Although you know when you populate, uh, you know, an MB6 uh, one rack unit six slot, like the density is still pretty uh, pre pretty important. Um, but for more like, applications where you have a single source or something like that, that's a perfect companion. Great. So now we, if we look at the High Vision Makito family, I mean, we have many more Makitos that you can look at uh, on our website. But uh, you know, we have two Makito X4s. We have the Quad HD uh, version, and we have the single, the new single um, uh, input version with uh, goes up to 4K, and then we have the Makito X as well for H.264 uh, uh, workflows. Yep, exactly. So the X uh, platform has been around. Uh, it's a very, very successful product, um, and uh, we have a single channel and dual channel. Um, those are for applications where up to HD is needed, and then you have the single channel and quad channel if you need uh, up to UHD. Um, all these products are obviously compatible. We've got the decoder versions as well uh, that are not shown here, but like they're still part of the uh, X, uh, X and X4 family. Okay, great. So for um, for those of you who might already be using Makito, especially the Makito X4, we're also launching new software releases for as well. We have a recent one that came out a few weeks ago, the 1.5 version, and uh, there's a bunch of new features included in that. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, some of those? Yeah, so maybe like a top three, top four would be, uh, so we updated the SRT library. Uh, so just, a, you know, perhaps a reminder. So we, the version of SRT that runs on Makito's and all our products are the exact same version 
version that is on GitHub. So uh, so that's why the, the the products are compatible with any other uh, third party SRT based uh, you know devices. So we updated uh, to the latest version, and that brings also a new feature for uh, something called AEAD for authenticated encryption. Uh, that makes uh, you know not only SRT uh, even more secure, it's already secure, but it's also additional protection against the uh, men uh, in the middle attack. Um, so uh, so that uh, again, we're constantly uh, improving SRT to uh, improve different capabilities, but also uh, security as well, which is pretty important. And also more audio encoders. Yeah, so they based on demand, uh, there was uh, a need to actually uh, add more audio uh, streams per uh, output. So this is uh, something we added. Uh, no need to have extra license uh, as soon as you upgrade to 1.5, which is actually publicly available on our download center. Um, the uh, you can actually upgrade to 1.5, and and that capability uh, becomes active. Um, and then another thing we added, which is pretty important, is the support for uh, SCUDI 10435. So in other words, uh, you know, if your people are familiar with the broadcast workflow for uh, ad insertion, you're probably familiar with the concept of SCUDI 104, which is uh, ad markers within the SDI. So we take those and all the messages that are into the SDI uh, signal, and then we convert it into SCUDI 35 for transport stream-based compatibility. So this is typically done for uh, contribution to OTT for cloud um, cloud production and, uh, and cloud workflow. Uh, and uh, so you can actually have a playout server or something like that that will generate those messages. And then we'll, we'll take those and we'll send them uh, over a stream, whether it's an SRT stream or, or something else. And we're not finished there because we have another release coming out soon for the Makito X4, where we're going to be introducing a new UI. And I think uh, you have a... You'll, you'll be able to show show this to us. Uh, yeah, well. absolutely. Actually, we're just a few weeks from uh, from announcing the next release. Uh, so, which is the uh, you know what we call the uh, internally the code name is the Argon user interface and user experience. So, I'm just going to walk you through quickly. Uh, I can start. Gisela. You ready? Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> so this is the new look and feel, right? The new skin. So we log in and now we have a dashboard with actually the ability to have thumbnails. So I can see my resource on the dashboard, you know, which uh, audio and video encoding cores are used and, you know, active and stop uh, connected to remote uh, cloud management. I can have, uh, you know, my streams with some uh, statistics uh, to give me a little bit of an indication of the, what's going on. If I do a deeper dive into my video encoding course, I can see the thumbnail, which is my source, give me confidence. I can have additional statistics without opening up a new panel. Um, I can have detailed configuration. So essentially the exact same configuration parameters that you had before would uh, or reorganize them in a more uh, streamlined way with the resolution and codec. Um, you can actually stop start uh, just with one click. You can actually even sort because you can rename those encoding cores now. You can sort them uh, you know, by status and names. Same thing with the multiple audio encoding engine. Uh, we can actually uh, obviously also have statistics and configuration. Uh, but we can also uh, kind of filter uh, very quickly with just one click which ones are active and inactive. Um, so you only see what's needed. And these are the streams that are uh, configured where you have, uh, like in the case of SRT, uh, graphs about uh, your performance. And if you want more detailed streams, uh, more detailed statistics, sorry, you, then you can do a deeper dive and export even that uh, information. Um, you can also um, obviously configure your streams, whether it's transport stream, SRT, all the protocols that we do support. Uh, you have uh, advanced settings uh, that you can just enable, disable, um, so it doesn't clutter the user interface. Um, you can stop and start just one click, um, so we can see that the, it's pretty snappy in terms of uh, user interface. Got your uh, status information, your settings more on the admin side. Um, serial numbers, all the security settings uh, also. Uh, network settings with IPv6, just a reminder that all our Makito support IPv6 uh, also. Um, so this is, uh, again, very consistent user interface throughout, uh, whether it's a, more on the operation side and on the admin side. 
Um, and uh, so, yeah, the, the goal here was really to streamline the user interface with just, uh, you know, minimize the number of clicks before, uh, you know, when, when you move from one place to another. Uh, with the side panel here, that helps a lot. Um, so that uh, gives you a bit of, a, of an overview. And then um, actually, you also, in terms of managing presets, uh, now they are accessible directly on top and uh, where you can have your uh, presets that are assigned as startup. You can actually import and create new presets and they become accessible just with uh, you know, one or two clicks, pretty much wherever you are within the user interface. This looks really great, Gisela. So I understand this is going to be available for the Makito X4 encoder, the quad and the single channel version. Yeah, exactly. So all the X4 encoding platform, so the single channel uh, and the X4 four channel are actually uh, will inherit that user interface. The Makito FX that was just launched uh, around NAB uh, actually already inherited the FX. So if you're using or if you're you purchase the FX, actually, it already has that uh, pretty cool user interface with the thumbnail and everything. Great. Can't wait to start using it. Well, thumbnail makes a big difference. It gives you really confidence into uh, into what's connected. Yeah, exactly. So uh, now we just talk a little bit about our mobile contribution solutions, which we are also showing at, uh, at NAB. So for those of you who are perhaps already familiar with Makito, you know, that, you know, Makito X4 has been used for many different types of events, especially at live sports for where you have multi-camera remote production. So multiple cameras going into uh, Makito X4, which are then streamed over, over the internet uh, to our Makito X4 decoders. And then the other way around, you can also use an encoder and a decoder to send a return feed back to the fields. And now with our uh, mobile contribution solutions, we're able to do a very similar workflow, but over a mobile over mobile phone networks. So, uh, for example, if you use the High Vision Pro 460, um, you can you also have four SDI inputs. So you can have uh, you can encode and stream four um, HD uh, cameras over the mobile bonded cellular network using our SST technology, and, and it will go to a stream hub, which then receives it and decodes it to SDI, NDI, or TMT2110 to the production mixer. And in the reverse, you can also use StreamHub to send return feeds back to the field directly to the, the transmitters. So now we have two, um, two uh, remote production uh, workflow solutions, whether you're using fixed cameras or, uh, or mobile uh, roaming cameras. So let's look into a little bit more detail. Um, first, we did win an, an award at, uh, at, at the NAB show for best products for the StreamHub receiver and the Pro 460 uh, encoder. I'm mean, a transmitter. So uh, if we look at the transmitter portfolio overview, we have all sorts of different transmitters depending on the use case. We have transmitters that, that can be attached directly to, to on the back of a camera, that can be put in a backpack, that can be installed in a rack in an OB van, for example. The, we have smartphone applications as well and wearable uh, transmitters that you can walk around with. So uh, you have the High Vision Pro. Uh, the High Vision Rack, which is our, our standalone rack mount uh, encoders. We have Mojo Pro and then the High Vision Air. So, um, so the Pro 460 and the Rack 400 uh, version. So Pro 460 is our mobile transmitter that includes uh, six um, cellular modems. And then the Rack 400 has the same features and the same software but it's designed as an encoder. You can add uh, external um, antennas if you want, or you can just use it as an encoder uh, over an IP network. So the uh, version 3.0 software that's about to be released will have, has a lot of cool features. So you can now encode and stream up to four audio pairs for SDI input. We can also uh, transport uh, bank uh, data, SCUDI 104 or time code, et cetera. And another cool feature is the ability to stop, start, uh, live uh, broadcast and recording directly from a camera, especially if uh, someone if you're using a Panasonic, a Sony, or Blackmagic camera, for example, you can actually control your uh, your your broadcast directly from that camera. In addition, you can control it from the front panel. The Pro 460 has a touchscreen front panel, so you can control your broadcast and recording sessions from that from the web UI, just logging into the the web UI with a browser, uh, or from StreamHub. You can remotely control your devices from StreamHub, so that someone back in the studio can um, can manage and help the camera operators do their job. 
Uh, and finally, we have a USB remote control. If you have it in a backpack, you can have a USB remote control in front of you to control your, your transmitter. So there's many different ways you can control it depending on your use case. Yeah, the camera trigger is a pretty pretty cool feature. That, Very cool. Uh, you know, it helps a lot with the simplifying the workflow. Exactly. So, um, and another really cool feature, I was hoping you could explain this a little bit to us, Gislan, is that uh, we've now, we're bringing down latency down to 80 milliseconds uh, from uh, encoding all the way to decoding over a 5G network. Yep. So, I mean, the, the guys have been working pretty hard in the in the lab to, like, tune uh, everything, like every piece of the chain from the uh, transmission to the decoding. So, and we can actually do that, believe it or not, over a wireless uh, network. So, so the 80 milliseconds, obviously you need the latest version of the uh, transmitter firmware, as well as the latest version on the stream hub receiver. And uh, so the 80 millisecond is really glass to glass from SDI input of the transmitter to the SDI out of the stream hub uh, over a 5G that uh, that implies, though, that it's a 5G private network, so you don't have to deal with the same congestion as you would get with a public network. Uh, but those private networks, 5G private network, are uh, more and more available in many places, uh, both indoor and outdoor. And uh, that makes it more possible to do uh, low latency remote production with the flexibility of being wireless. A lot of sports stadiums, for example, are equipping, uh, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. It's uh, racetracks, uh, a lot of the the wide you know venues that are out there. Like it can actually benefit from that kind of uh, workflow. So this can essentially replace older RF technology or as even SDI in some cases. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. As more and more five G private network becomes available, like five uh, G in a box, right? Uh, we we see that more and more uh, available. So that uh, that's going to become mainstream. This is very exciting. Okay, so another. Um, new uh another uh, another product that's very popular is mojo pro Gisela, i think you have it on your on your phone there um so you can actually download it for free and and and, and try it out okay. um so it works in conjunction with uh, stream hub which we'll go into more detail in a second so mojo pro is a, is a very you know sophisticated advanced um, mobile journalism application that allows you to broadcast live it allows you to record as well you can record and forward files it has you can use an intercom function it actually has you can also display a video return you can do editing you have lots of advanced camera settings but the really the main exciting thing is that it actually uses also uses our SST bonding technology. So you can actually bond your Wi-Fi connection with your cellular connection, which is pretty cool. So you have extra level of redundant of, of reliability and more bandwidth. And it's really a professional app. I mean, not only the, the signal, like the, the stream is, is robust thanks to the, the, the bonding and the SST, but it's also like the video return, the, the user interface, all the advanced settings that you have. If you if you want to really you know, kind of like have a pretty good quality type of event because perhaps mounting the phone, your phone on a on a rig, right, or something like that. That's uh, that's really really cool in terms of uh, capabilities. A lot of people are using it. And just as with our with our other products, we're continually updating uh, Mojo Pro. We have a latest release that uh, adds uh, UHD 4K uh, recording capabilities. You can also reset the, the camera settings. There's a lot of really advanced camera, camera settings like white balance and ISO and all those things you can reset to the default um, um, easily. And there's also vertical, horizontal tilt display. So when you want to tilt your screen left or right or up and down, you can go find your default setting easily, uh, just as with any you know professional camera. Um, and you also have a timer screensaver on a black background to save energy and can have it running and ready to go, but not waste to use up all your battery. Um, so a lot of cool, cool features being added to, to Mojo Pro. Now, uh, Mojo Pro, again, was works in conjunction with StreamHub, our StreamHub receiver, it just was as with our other transmitters. So StreamHub is an extremely uh, versatile uh, receiver and decoder and it also does a number of other things so you can receive streams from ip um, to other and, and and decode and send it to other ip formats or you can go from ip to sdi as well um there are there are two there's a cloud version of stream hub which i'll show you in a second as part of our demo and there's also uh, server versions which will include the sdi cards if you want to include that in your in your sdi workflow um it can so again it can decode hbc h64 it can transmit it can 
do all, it can do transcoding, all sorts of things. So just to give you a general idea of what it looks like, on the top left, you see all of your inputs. Um, so these inputs, again, can be from various IP sources, or it could be from SST or SRT. On your bottom left, you have your transcoders, and I'll show you that how that works in a second. And then on the right, you have your outputs and you can assign, for example, if you have the server version with the SDI card, you can assign the outputs to specific SDI outputs within your broadcast workflow. So it's extremely versatile, easy to use. So, and then we have a whole bunch of inputs that you can support, including SST, which is our bonded cellular technology, SRT, of course, HLS, RTSB, and NDI. And for outputs, we've just, uh, you know, we, we've added a new output recently, which is SMPTE 2110. Um, so we can also output to SMPTE 2110 workflows. Now let's have a quick look at what it looks like. So this is, uh, you know, we're logged into the uh, cloud version of, uh, of StreamHub. And uh, so here we see on the, on the top left, we have our four different inputs coming in. Uh, we have, uh, Two, uh, two of the inputs are just sources from the internet, they're HLS feeds. Uh, and then in the middle, we have uh, an SST feed coming in. And then on the bottom left there, we have uh, Mikito sending us an SRT feed. So if we expand on our SST feed, we can see this, it's an Air 320. Uh, it's using an SDI input at 1080p. Uh, you can see some real-time statistics on, on the actual transmission stream. And then um, now, now, however, we're encoding this in HEVC, and for our production purposes, we want to convert it to H.264. So what we can do is we can click on our settings and we can select H.264. So it's going to transcode from HEVC to H.264, and we want to lower the resolution from 1080p to 720p. So we set that as well. And then uh, there we go. We can set up our, our transcoder. And then we also want to be able to assign an output. Now, so for outputs, we have a number of options. Again, this is a cloud version, so there's no SDI, but we have SST, RTSB, HLS, RTMP, and of course, SRT. So in this case, we would like to use SRT as an output. So then once we get that set up, it's really, really easy. We just drag the, the input source to the transcoder. So now you can see it's transcoding from HEVC to H64. And then we drag the transcoded video to the output. And there we go. We have an SRT stream. It's really, it's, it's, it's very, very easy and intuitive to use. And you can add multiple outputs. This is the four by four version, but there's eight by eight setups. There's 16 by 16 input output, and you can have multiple stream hubs uh, running at the same time as well. And what's pretty cool also with this workflow is that uh, perhaps as an engineer, right, or as an admin, you can pre-configure those things and then let, uh, so prior to an event, and then let the operator come in and just do the drag and drop or actually uh, just uh, hit the play button and whatever workflow you've created within StreamUp will start being engaged, right? So, so it helps a lot uh, during, uh, you know, planning events. And one of the last things I would just add is that the, you can also add one of the encoding features so you can add, uh, create a multi-viewer as well. Yep. It's a, yeah, for monitoring, that's also very useful. Yeah. So there we go. And uh, and as with every other product, we're continually updating it with new features. And we talked about some of these a second ago for the transmitter side. So um, we have well the ST2110 output. So this can be up to two 4HD or two 4K um, outputs. So uh, it's, and then we also adding AES67 and Dante audio interface for intercom. We got time code, um, uh, auxiliary data support, uh, HDR with support HDR, PQ, and HLG, just as with our transmitters and our Makito encoders. Uh, and we also support the ultra low latency mode that uh, Gizman explained to us a second ago, down to 80 milliseconds. So that's pretty exciting. And we, uh, we can support up to 16 audio channels per stream hub. So, uh, so this is, you know, we're continually adding new features to, to stream hub. And, um, Oh, I'll pass it on to you, Marcus. Yeah, so uh, we're going to do the uh, trivia here. So uh, one second here. Uh, do you guys have your hats? Yeah. I, I got mine on. All right, so here we go, guys. We have four questions. I mentioned that you had the chance to win uh, one of these cool high vision baseball caps. Uh, Gisela and Mark are our, uh, our models for today. Um, so there are four questions. Um, multiple choice. Uh, all of the correct answers go into a pot and we will select three at random. So let's start the first question. 
Uh, unsurprisingly, this is uh, not, you know, 1980s music trivia, but rather high vision encoder and transcoder trivia, um, my favorite kind. And the first question is, which of these products um, offers 4K and HDR encoding? Uh, now, some questions are harder than others. Uh, this one, I would say, is uh, a tricky one. So let's get the poll up there so people can begin submitting their answer. Um, and uh, we'll let it go for a little while so we can see what's going on. Uh, and uh, in, in the background, when you uh, see that the answers have slowed down, um, you can go ahead and share the results. Um, and I... I'm not going to give anybody the answer, but you can see answer one is A only, that's Makitos only, B only, which is the high vision pro transmitters, A, B, D, E, and G. So the Makitos, the pro, the Makito FX, the Makito X4 rugged, and the high vision rack encoder, or none of them. Hmm. So how's it coming with the answers? We so here we go. The correct answer people, people was A, B, D, E, and G. Looks like uh, the vast majority of people got that one correct. So congratulations to the all the people that submitted that answer. Your name will be going into the hat to win the baseball caps. Next question. Which of these products supports live transmission over 5G? So there was a clue earlier on. You can put the, the answer up. Um, this is potentially tricky. Is it the pro only, the pro in the air, or none of them? Um, I don't know if this one falls into the difficult or easy category. We'll see after everybody's submitted their answers. We'll give you another, uh, another few seconds to answer this one. And after this, we have two more questions, two more questions. excited to see the answer for this one one should the percentage should be higher actually than the first one i think i would hope that everybody yeah. gets this one right hope nobody says none Let's see what we got so we got, oh, about the same about the same interesting so uh b and f of course was the correct answer for everybody that answered that so congratulations to you guys another bunch of people in the hat for the drawing uh let's do the next question question number three we saw a StreamHub demo earlier. Which of these products can stream into StreamHub? Uh, and so let's get the poll question up there. Uh, and now this one, of course, tricky B only. That would be the Pro uh, or the Pro and the Air and the Rack or number three, the Makito and the Pro or all of them. So take a second to answer this one. I know everybody wants those baseball caps. They are very, very highly sought after. Rare, rare high vision memorabilia. Um, so hopefully we'll get a lot of people whose names get thrown into the pot. The Stream Hub is pretty versatile, right? Pretty versatile. Oh, okay. So this one, uh, the right answer, of course, was all of them. Uh, and a uh, 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 majority of people got that one correct. So excellent job there. Um, and last question, last question. So this is, of course, from High Vision. So maybe not surprisingly, it's an SRT question. But which of these products supports the SRT protocol? Uh, and uh, there are your choices. Let's get the quiz question up for this one. And uh, yes, yeah, so is it only the Makitos? Is it the Makito X4 only? Is it the Makito X1, FX, and Rugged? Uh, is it the transmitters? Is it all of them? Tough question. Tough question. I wish you never know. It could be a trick. Could be easy. This is the last one. So hopefully, uh, for those of you who didn't get the other ones correctly, you get this one correctly. So you two will be entered into the drawing to have a chance to win the commemorative high vision baseball cap, commemorating the High Vision Technology webinar of uh, July, June 27th, 2023. 
let's see how that's going. And we got <laughs> almost all of them correct for SRT. The answer, of course, is all of them. So that is the High Vision Trivia. And I'd like to thank everybody for participating. Uh, once uh, we pick the winners, we will uh, get in touch with them uh, separately by email and arrange to send you your prize. So again, thank you everybody for participating and I uh, hope you had fun and hope you learned something. So we're gonna shift gears now. We've talked a lot about our encoder and transmitter technology uh, for broadcast contribution workflows. Uh, there was another side to our NAB story this year. Um, and this was, I showed you at the beginning, the back of the booth. This was the front of the booth. Uh, and what we were showcasing there, of course, was High Vision Command 360, which is our video wall technology for operations and command centers. At the booth, we had set up a six uh, by two 55 inch video wall. Uh, we were using it to showcase the live demonstrations that were happening on the other side of the booth. But of course, that's typically not what people use it for. Um, it is, of course, a video wall uh, platform uh, made up of software and all the hardware components you need in order to build uh, a video wall of pretty much any size. Uh, key characteristics of High Vision uh, Command 360, it's ease of use uh, and ease of setup and deployment. It was designed to be very easy. No pro programming required, no uh, minimal IT uh, intervention required. Uh, so uh, that you know that was something that was fundamental. And and this product is actually based on many, many, many years uh, of experience. So uh, this is is taking in the feedback and the requirements of many different types of users, which you see in the feature set described here. Um, centralized con control and administration is another key feature. Uh, this really makes it possible for one person from one location through a browser anywhere actually to configure components, devices, create layouts, uh, manage permissions, etc. Uh, the, the video wall itself is capable of bringing content of almost any kind uh, from physical devices like media players to IP video streams coming from anywhere. Um, the scalability and the flexibility of the system is a an important key differentiator for High Vision Command 360. Uh, it allows you to build solutions uh, for a very small room operation center to a very, very large, some of the biggest deployments uh, in the world, taking advantage of even you know huge screens, multiple locations, multiple rooms, uh, all part of one giant flexible system. And as with all High Vision product security is a core component of what we do. Uh, and that's no different with High Vision Command 360. Who uses it? Well, it's used in a number of different um, types of environments, including the following. Uh, defense typically would use it for battle management, for ISR, uh, for cyber defense, um, command and control type situations. Governments typically uh, will rely on this for uh, coordinating responses to emergencies, for instance, um, cyber, uh, cyber type situations. Uh, and more public safety, we see a lot of interest now, especially in the emerging trend of real-time policing, real-time crime centers and E911 type of situations. And last but not least, enterprise environments where it's used to, um, to manage assets, ensure that facilities are running smoothly, uh, protect against fraud, watch for cyber threats, et cetera. So all of the, the different deployments, what they have in common, of course, is that they have the need for sometimes very large operation centers, sometimes multiple operation centers in many different employ uh, in many different locations, et cetera. Now, this is just a very brief introduction to High Vision Command 360. We've done a couple of webinars recently, uh, one back in March, uh, so you can get much more information, including a product demonstration, uh, if you check out the uh, webinar site, the chat link here helps you find that where you can get more information about iVision Command 360 and you get a little taste there of what video wall is capable of doing. It's very configurable, flexible, uh, uh, easy to use. So with that, uh, we just wanna close on one last point, which maybe not everybody is aware of, but uh, we have uh, been offering rental services for a while now, uh, and we wanted to make sure everybody was aware of it so that when you uh, have uh, perhaps specific events in which you need capacity, extra capacity, or uh, an event in a location where you aren't able to get your gear to, um, you can work with us. Uh, we uh, typically work through a network of partners. 
to provide rental solutions, making sure you have the latest technology to provide high quality, and very reliable uh, live video. You can customize rental packages to help you get what you need um, at the duration you need it for with access to 24 seven support. So if you can scan the QR code there and get to the page of whatever you need uh, to submit a request for some rental help. And if you can't figure out uh, where to find it, just as a reminder, it is available on our homepage uh, in the carousel in the main menu and up in the main menu bar, you can get to the High Vision Rental Services on highvision.com. So just uh, to close then, uh, last really uh, point to bring up here, uh, and you know, the key takeaways from today, uh, the today's webinar, regardless of what your contribution needs is, High Vision has the complete contribution ecosystem uh, to enable your workflows. Uh, these are, of course, typically broadcast, but we have encoders and transmitters that are used in many different types of environments, from broadcast to defense to government to enterprise to public security. And moreover, uh, the you know the latest edition, uh, we're really talking about something new here, the video wall technology, which is part of High Vision's product portfolio. You saw what it's a uh, very brief inter, um, uh, example of what it can do. Uh, there's much more content available on our website. Uh, and of course, if you have interest in any of this stuff uh, or are uh, looking to have a conversation with sales right now, get in touch with us. You can also use sales at highvision.com. I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody, uh, everybody who joined today. Uh, thank you for, for being here and spending the time with us today. Hopefully we provided you with some uh, helpful and useful information about the new things that have been going on at High Vision. I'd also like to thank uh, Gisela and Mark for uh, their uh, their help in the presentation today. And of course, um, everybody in the background answering questions, uh, facilitating uh, and all that. So with that, I'd like to wish everybody a great day. And once again, thank you all for joining the High Vision Technology Webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Hey, thanks, everyone. Bye.